This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are talking about Metropolitan, Revolution, Goose Island, and we dive into some of the events including Uppers and Downers and Dark Side, all happening this weekend. What did we do these last three weeks, OE? What'd you make it to? Yeah, because, you know, it's going to court out, boop, you know, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I know. How's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Fest. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And it's a rainy day as we're recording this. Perfect time to stay indoors and drink beer. Man, you said it all when you said it, Brad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you've never listened to the show, what we do here is we talk about the beer we're drinking currently, beer we drank this week, and beer we're going to be drinking. And then we ended up with some uh, beer news, too, as well. Yeah. All around drinking-related talk. Yeah. Uh, so this week we're drinking the Oscars Pardon Pale from Haymarket. This is their Belgian style pale ale. Making great beer for great beer drinkers. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, four and a half percent. Yeah, this is a low one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like the um, the moderate fruit character in it, like orange and peach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it's a real easy, I guess, enjoyable beer. There's like like you said, it's kind of fruit, a little sweetness to it, but yeah, you don't have to think too much about it. It just feels like it's gonna go with everything. Oscar's got a mean mustache, and I'm noticing on the Haymarket logo, there's a, a little stash, like a lift driver-like stash. Oh, right, yeah. In between Haymarket and Brewery, the words on the on the can. Mm-hmm. And these cans were, oh, these cans are almost, a couple, they're just coming up on old cans, yeah. June. Oh, man. Luckily, it's a Belgian pale where, yeah. you know. I didn't even know they were canning since June. I didn't even. So, that's surprising. Maybe that's supposed to be jilt No, June. Yeah, Haymarket cans are coming from Bridgman, Michigan. The Haymarket pub is, of course, in West Loop. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, Oscar's parted, and they got their uh, pale, their IPA as well. Matthias. And Matthias. And um, they got something else. Oh, the speaker's wagon. Yes. The so pills. Those, those are the three, the green, blue, and yellow. I was always shape. surprised, man, like a lot of times. Maybe it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. But last stop on the brew bus was always Haymarket. Yeah. And, you know, they, they move pretty quick in there. So you can have, like, customized flights instead of everyone getting the same thing. So I would always tell people, hey, pick your beers. And a lot of times they would lean towards the Speaker's Wagon Pilsner. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was kind of a surprise because usually that's it, – it's outside the norm. Sometimes you can get the ragers on those tours. Yeah, you would think that last stop you're like, all right, I'm ready to, like, right. step it up a notch. <laughs> like, let's go. Yeah, go out with a that bang. Claire's Thirsty and <laughs> – Big stouts or whatever. But yeah, a lot of times they'd be like, no, I'll, this pill sounds delightful. <laughs> I'm like, right on, look at you guys. Nice. All right, well, we'll keep sipping on these. Uh, we do have some, uh, what, Hop Slam in the back room. We'll probably do another video, though, so check out that if you haven't checked out the beer reviews on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, so last week after we recorded, we took a walk down the street and went to the Metropolitan Brewery, brew pub, not brew pub because there's no food, so brewery. Yeah, tap room. Tap room. Yeah, Metro Brew, man. Um, what well, they've been around for like ten years now, right? Something like that. Seems like it. Yeah, I think it's probably close to ten now. Yeah. Yeah, this was my first time there. It's actually like the closest brewery to where we record. I think. Right. Yeah. So it's like a half a mile away. Yeah, we're right <laughs> on uh, Belmont here, so you just go right over the bridge and you're good to go. Yeah, um, I was a little thrown off by all the construction going on over there. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, it's like a maze of construction. Like when you think it's done, no, there's another corridor that's under construction, and then you know, you finally get to the space. Right, and when it's dark in the winter, it's all snowy. Yeah, there's not a lot of lightage or signage for where you should be going. I'm like, yo, what is going on over here? It's <laughs> like, you know, once you get back there, it's a proper tap room. Yeah. But walking up to it, it almost feels like, um, you know, like like a, like Halloween. Yeah, and you, <laughs> you know? like, go through the door. You're like, is this is this cool? Am I cool? <laughs> uh, but I had gone there in the summertime, maybe like their first week that they were open. So yeah. uh, you were able to like step out onto the patio or the like little deck area right there and kind of enjoy what I think the benefit of that tap room is. Yeah. 
but it's huge. Like it can hold a lot of people, especially in the winter. So I love the space. We were chatting up the staff and they were talking about this, uh, this mall essentially that's going up around them. Right. And they're at the rear of the mall and then they're the first tenant of the mall. Yeah. They're the only space that's built out. So it sounds like, you know, there's a yeah, Metropolis Coffee is going to be there. A mm-hmm. distillery and a restaurant are going in. That yeah, kind of thing. The distillery, I think, just signed their lease yeah, or something. So yeah. he didn't. He wouldn't tell us who. Right. The way they describe it, it kind of reminds me of the source in Denver where Crooked Stave is. Okay. Where it's 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 kind of a it's kind of a mall, but it's like a really cool mall where there's like a butcher shop and a bottle shop and you know there's a, a coffee roaster, a bakery, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Or like, um, or like the plant where they just have like this a certain type of tenant that that's there. Yeah, you know. So that's cool. I I think he also mentioned something about like a build out they're thinking of doing right, like building out the patio. They have uh, permits or whatever that they can make the patio larger. Yeah. So it can extend over the river there, and then have a tie up for your boat. So if you're one of those few people in Chicago with a boat, yeah, right. Go down the river and tie it up there, and then go into the a brewery and restaurant there and pick up some eats and food yeah and then i liked how um you know there's some history there so like uh we were talking about um what was it the old slaughterhouses that were in the back of the yards back yeah. in the day and something about like you know the leather there's a term for this tannery tannery yeah, yeah where they're taking the the, the, you know the skins they're taking the skins the, the hides the, the hide. hides they're taking the hides and they're taking bringing them up the river to where metro currently is but that used to be the place where you know the tannery for the back of the yards was mm-hmm. and there's so. still one tannery i think closer to like webster that's still there because it smells and you can kind of hit it sometimes but yeah oh yeah like um like webster and the river right yeah yeah always got a weird smell over there yeah so i think there's still a tannery there yeah uh, but yeah this building used to be a tannery and because uh, it's a weird space because like the windows like that go into the brew pub mm-hmm. or brewery part are really low like they must have been a cart or something that like came in from the water like a shipping ramp or something like, oh you mean like it's less window and more brick right like that yeah, yeah. and they're like they're ground level so that must have been like a cart or mm-hmm. some sort of track that like brought stuff in and out of the two rooms or something yeah um Great space, just kind of raw industrial yeah. space over there. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I dig it. We tried a couple beers, right? I think we sampled the um, the Haas Hellas, which was the um, the coffee infused uh, Hell's Lager, I believe. Right, which you said might be the beer they're gonna bring to Uppers and Downers. I think so, right? And then also we tried the uh, the Nitro uh, Jitterator Doppelbach. Yeah, that's a eight percent Doppelbach with some sort of a Kenyan coffee in it. Yeah, that was great. Man, that was fantastic. I think that I didn't get out much. I think that might have been the best thing I had this week. <laughs> it was uh, really good. Yeah, I, I, I might agree with that. Um, yeah. It was nice because it was on nitro, and because it had that coffee, it had that like latte right. kind of vibe. Right. Um, the approach that you know, like you know, brewing lagers in general is like the pinnacle of like brewing, right? Okay. Because you know, it's like you're going for you know subtle flavors and a subtle aromas. And then, like, the little, the slightest of errors can ruin everything, you know. I know, yeah. It's like this, you know. So a lot of people feel that way about bloggers in general. So I think it's pretty cool that they they took on that task, you know, mm-hmm. of like, hey, we're just going to make primarily lagers. Yeah, you know? and that they can do other things with them, like coffee infused and yeah. throw them on nitro and just have some fun with them. That stuff you don't see from just your, your Bud Lights kind of. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like... um. Uh, the hell the the Haas Hellas the coffee infused Hellas, uh, that was made for the Rattler, you know the bar the the restaurant the Rattler yeah and uh, Logan that's reopening yeah this week what happened they had some kind of like mechanical issues or something over there I I'm not I'm not sure why they were closed yeah but that nitro jitterate jitterator pff, good business really good. yeah good business. Uh, did you check out anything else then, or was that your only stop then? Man, you know, actually, I think that's all I did. Oh, we, we stopped by the beer temple. Okay. That's kind of like a normal stop at this point. Um, just some St. Aaron on tap, Contrapasso. That's their Imperial Stout with coffee and uh, vanilla. That was nice. on tap. Okay. Um, the Patsky Stout from Mars was on tap. I tried that. Should have went with the Contrapasso because that kicked. Oh, right. Huh. Yeah. But, yeah. They got a Hawaiian version of Speedway Stout on now. Hawaiian, like with pineapple or with, I don't know. with Hawaiian coffee? I don't know. Oh, man, that would be a buzzkill. Because the regular Speedway Stout is a coffee stout. Yeah, it's so probably just Hawaiian coffee. Just Hawaiian coffee? Probably. <sighs> it's not going to have like spam and pineapples in it. 
I was hoping for at least a pint. You want a Hawaiian pizza beer? At least a pina. <laughs> Hawaiian pizza stout. But, yeah, that's all I did. And that's like the alley. Okay. You know, you, there's an alley that connects Metro to Beer Temple, so I'm like, I got to take this alley. Check it out. Yeah. Next time, I'm not taking the alley. No. Well, it might be summer, so it might be a little easier. It was, like, snowy and wet and yeah, gross. There's, there's other stuff in the alley when it's summertime, though. That's true, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think I would just scratch the alley. But, you know, I had to take it. They say it connects. I had to take it. Oh. Uh, I mean, <coughs> I did a couple of brew pub stops over the weekend. I I was in the mood. I wanted that salad or burger from Corridor. So oh, right on. I was like, I should I should go there. I just I want that. I was like, Corridor oh, is your jam. Yeah, I like it. But then it started to snow. Yeah. On what Saturday? And I was like, ah, screw this. Again, I, I've don't, been... I don't really want to drive because I was going to drive because it's a. I had other places I needed to go, so I needed yeah. to drive. So I nixed that, and we just ended up. Uh, Grabbing a lift and heading over to uh, Revolution. Right on. Uh, tap room? Yeah, the tap room. Okay. The brew pub. No, the well, brew, pub. brew pub. Sorry. Brew pub, brew pub on uh, Milwaukee there. We threw our name in because we were going to do dinner, but they said it was going to be like an hour wait. That place was packed. Gosh. I was I was under the mindset that this has been open for, what, five, six at years least, now? At least. The, the hype had to die down, right? Dude. No. Dude, sometimes I do my work from home day from Rev, and even like 11 o'clock on Wednesdays, it's, it is what it is. It's like always people there. Yeah, but I, yeah, I've gone for lunch sometimes, and it's not that busy, so I thought maybe, yeah. but it was Saturday. What was I thinking? So we ended up just having a beer while we waited for a while for our table, but at that point, we were like, well, what else is around here? And let's just go somewhere else. So yeah. we ended up leaving after a beer, had the Working Man Mild. But they had huge selection of their, like, the Death, Death Star yeah. stouts on. But it was, like, a page and a half of 13% stouts and then, like, the standard five, you know, Working Man, Golden Arm, uh whatever the porter like there's a couple other ones it's like oh i wanted to try something different yeah but i didn't want a 13 percent beer as like my first beer of the night kind of thing right i think that working man mild and even the working woman both really well done you know mm. so i had that and we went we went elsewhere then the next night Ended up over at uh, the Goose Island Clybourne Pub. The one you hate. I know. Even though I said I <laughs> was like, you'll never see me in there again. Uh, went in there. Uh, Maeve went. My wife, she went in for uh, to check it out as well. Yeah. She hadn't been. So that was cool. We just sat at the bar. I think I had the grumpy old or old grumpy. Old man grumpy? Old man grumpy. Yeah. yeah. I think that's their pale. Their yeah. local pale. Dry, hot, local pale. Yeah, right. Yeah. Solid, solid beer. We ended up getting a couple of their salads, so that was the first time eating there. Yeah, they're rolling BCS like strong. Every time I look up, they're tapping, not tapping, but like on premise bottle of like BCS like, oh, every week. I didn't, even, I didn't even notice that. I was looking for, even though I think I've had Old Man Grumpy before, I was looking for something different and just kind of easy drinking. But yeah. it felt like a lot of the standard fare. At that time, I'm curious about Brasserie Noir. It's the um, it's an Imperial Stout, not yeah. necessarily the same recipe as Reverend County, but Imperial Stout in uh, but not Pepe Noir and not Pepe Noir. Then uh, what is it? Red wine barrels, I think. Mm-hmm. Imperial Stout on red wine barrels. I'm curious about that. Okay. Yeah, especially in the, since I had the uh, the strong ale with the coffee in the barrels from oh. Cruz Blanca. Right. Okay. Yeah. Curious. Uh, but those are my couple brew pub stops because also not only wanted to check them out just again. But also wanted to get in there for some photos for Instagram. Yeah, for the gram. Yeah, just check them out. Go and have a beer. Take a photo. See what's up. You know. Did that. So, that's that's our week then. It's a really mild, mild week. Out of what you drank, what's the best thing you had so far? I think I'd have to go with that jitterator. The jitterator's nice, man. Right? I actually might get it when we when this is over. I think that was my favorite, my best beer, the best thing I drank this week. Um, I can't remember anything else that I've had that stood out. So, yeah, it had to have been that. Yeah, man, something about fresh coffee. And we'll dive in uppers and downers later. But fresh coffee and a, and a nitro stout? Yeah. Half a mile down the street? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Nice, yeah. 
Uh, cool. So what about this week? You mentioned uppers and downers. Yes. Um, we'll start with Thursday, the 22nd, okay. uh, February 22nd. Not, that's not uppers and downers. Man, it's almost over February. Uh, Revolution, man. Over on Kedji, they're doing the, uh, the Deeth match. It's uh, They are going to decide um, a 2008 People's Champ on the fruit variant of Deeth's Tar. Okay. Yeah. So they'll have a bunch of other stuff on tap, but the – Competitors for these are going to be berries, currants, plums, and raspberries. So, I mean, they'll have them all on tap, and the people will decide what's... What's, what's the time on that? That is from 2 to 10. That's all day. Oh, 2 to 10. Because they close at 10, right? Probably. Um, yeah, the tap room. Okay. Um, Kezi, they probably do close at 10. Yeah. Um, they'll have a bunch of other cool stuff on. I need to get over there. I never go over there. I'm yeah, not maybe sure I think I was trying to make plans to meet up with someone for drinks on Thursday. Maybe that's the spot. Yeah. And, man, that... um. What was it? Fuck, what was it? It was I had one I wanna say it was cherry. Oh, okay. Man, so good on tap. Yeah. These cherry. And that you're on Death by Cherries. Right. And then you're on that side of the expressway. Yeah. It's a real easy walk to Maple the Maple Room, right? The Maple Room. Yeah, yeah, right. Maplewood. Where no well, kinda, uh, yeah. Maybe. It's not far. Okay. That underpass is kinda weird, but if you if you can get over that, yeah. Yeah. Because this is on Belmont, and the Maple Room's on Diversity. Right. That, those aren't far. No. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, I say less than a mile. Yeah, so you could do that if you're uh, hitting up Rev, and then you know they close at 10, because they do close early. They kick everyone out of there, like, real fast. If yeah. you've ever been there when they close, they're like, get out. <laughs> <laughs> get out now. They come, like, stick their like, finger hurry in, up. Your, in your drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's Thursday. Thursday. That's Thursday. Uh, Friday at Patty Long's, um, let's see. Oh, uh, Around the Bend is doing a collaboration tapping with uh, Alesmith. Nice. So they have a uh, barrel-aged Wee Heavy Scotch Ale. Cool. Man, few beer styles are more fun to say than this Wee Heavy. Wee Heavy. <laughs> yeah, wee Heavy. Um, they're going to have three other beers on tap. That's Friday the 23rd at Patty Long's. That's at 6 p.m. Yeah, we had their pretty lights around a little before Christmas. We need to get over there and have a little interview with them. I know I still have their card with the brewmaster that it's on my desk, and I'm forgetting his name, but always great beer. Yeah, cool dude, too. That um, that Pretty Lights was like uh, Belgian with like almonds in it. It was like or the cranberries. Rags, yeah, cranberry yeah. almonds. Yeah, it was tasty. Yeah, it was a good time. I think so, you can still find it around, too. Yeah, so that's uh, Friday. And then um, also on Friday is uh, Beguile. They're doing the uh, Imperial Pajamas release party. Yeah. So, so is this different? It sounds like because I thought they just did this, like, or was that a di- that was the beyond that was the. I feel like they date, just a, that was like a date stout, right? Right. Okay. This is a um. There's two versions. There's imperial pajamas. Yeah. And then there's imperial pajamas with uh, espresso. It's a uh, ipsento. Okay. Um, wildfire espresso. So it's a ten percent beer. Because their other stout that they do the release for. Uh, that one has like, I don't know, like five or six different variants of it. Yeah. Uh, that one's like, is it better next year or better? Wait till next year. Wait till next yeah. year. That's the other stout release they I think do. You're right. And that's uh, that's the one you often, or I've gone to that one and they've had like multiple versions of it. Yeah. So this is a um, Imperial Pajamas release. Uh, this starts at noon, and it looks like uh, Imperial Pajamas is an oatmeal stout. Oh, so Imperial Pajamas is an oatmeal stout with Wildfire Espresso. Okay. Yeah. So. Nice. Oh, so they take flannel pajamas, they double the oatmeal, and then they add the uh, espresso. Cool. There you go. Check yeah. that out on Friday. I like Bagal. I like oh, those guys. Sure, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Saturday. Uh, oh, Naperville. Naperville Elf. This is this weekend. Oh, wow. Naperville Winter Edition. This is a $60 ticket in Frontier Park in beautiful... Naperville, Illinois. That's going to be from noon to four. That's a Josh Siegel Lou Dog events. Lou Dog events, yeah. yeah. Um, I have you. You've been to the summer Naperville Ale Festival. You've been to winter. No, Neither. No. Have never you been? been. You've been to Naperville. Been to Naperville. Okay. <laughs> I went to the uh, the two brothers. Uh, they got a location in Naperville now. Yeah, that uh, whatever that's called. Um, the Northman. The Northman. No, yeah. No, Northman, that's nah. the that's the uh, North, that's the cider bar. Northwood. This thing's North. called something else. He, you know, they're yeah. really good with the stats, so they throw them on you. He's like, yeah, man, we um 
we're the only crew in Illinois that's got like seven SKUs in the top ten. <laughs> you know, like they're I love those guys. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's you always see the one brother, uh, Jim. You never see Jason, but Jim he'll hit you with those stats, and he it can't wait to share one of those sours with you too. Okay, I met him a few times, and he was like, he's a fun time. Okay, yeah, nice. Right, so uh, check that out if you're. In Naperville, or it's an easy train ride. You can take the train there and hop right off at the Naperville station. Yeah, for sure. You can drink on that train too. Yeah. So that is Saturday, um, and then Sunday. We got a big day Sunday, man. This is a this is a good weekend for some beer events. Yeah. You know, um, if I was a little younger, man, I'd tap them all. Damn. What, are you, what are you doing, man? You, know, don't, you can't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I keep up. I might go to one. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll start with. Uh, you gotta wake up, right? Is uppers and downers also on Sunday? I thought it's Saturday. Saturday? Yeah, uppers and downers at Talia Hall. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Saturday the uh, 24th. All right, so there's two sessions for that. Yeah, Festival of Coffee Beers. The first session, session one, is sold out. Yes. Um, this is a $65 ticket. It's all about experimental coffee beers, mm-hmm. right? So they, they have people make beer just for this event. Yeah, I went last year to session one. Uh, it was great. You, yeah. But... My only uh, downside is you have the strangest buzz that you can Ooh. imagine because you're super hopped up on coffee, but you're also like slightly drunk, so your body doesn't know what to do, and it yeah. kind of, and then you kind of start to freak out. You're like, very aware of how wasted you are, yeah. and you don't like that feeling and of you don't awareness. Like it. And then you like wonder, and then you get into your head like, is this safe? Should I be doing this? And so you like, <laughs> uh, yeah, because you're talking like. Not just coffee beers, but a lot. You're talking like espresso. Yeah, on they're, hand. Just, they're just pulling espresso <laughs> shots, and you're like, "Yeah, give me one of those." Oh, let me try this next one. And it's like, yeah. no, that's. And, and, and they can't wait to tell you like the difference between yeah. all the blends. That's not how you should do that. <laughs> that's dangerous. Man. And then you like that sounds so fun. You want to go home and crash, but, but you're you like, can't. All hopped up, you're like, I, uh, I don't just don't feel right. You just don't feel right. But man, I'm gonna grab some paint and uh. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to knock out this wall I've been meaning to paint. <laughs> I'm going to just run this marathon. Uh, I got this, right? Just... Yeah. So, so two th- sessions. That's uh, Talia Hall. Uh, so 11 to 3 is a sold-out session. 4 to 8 uh, sessions still available. Cool. Yeah. And then also, um, we had Chris Jacobson on the show a couple weeks ago. Dark Side is this weekend at the original Emporium in Wicker Park. Yeah. Uh, that's a new start. That's on Sunday. So Sunday, I guess, would be the 25th. All right. So if you yeah. go to the late night session for uppers and downers, you might just be able to keep going. And keep going. <laughs> yeah. Just bender. Yeah. Just drink through the night. Just keep that coffee buzz going. And yeah. You're good. I'm trying. I mean, outside of Chicago Craft Beer Week, I don't. There aren't too many of weekends like this one, as far as like cool, unique events on both days. Yeah. Right. You're getting a lot of big stouts on Sunday. You're getting a bunch of unique coffee beers on Saturday. Mm. Nice one, two punch. I get excited on those kind of weekends. Oh, and then the big one out in Naperville, all on the same weekend. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We got some good stuff this week. So. Cool. So hopefully, uh, we can check out one of those. I know we have we're tr- talking about uh, uppers and downers, or maybe at yeah. least. Uh, We'll make it to dark side for sure. Yeah. Well, cool. So those are the events happening. Uh, definitely grab tickets if they're still available, especially dark side because you can. It's cheaper. It's like ten dollars cheaper. Ten dollars cheaper, and dark side's a smaller play. It's a, a less um, capacity mm-hmm. at than Talia Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So what about some beer news before we wrap up this episode? Right on. Let's get into it. Um, Scratch Brewing announced that on March 3rd and March 4th, they're doing their fifth year anniversary, man. So you can walk away with a bottle of an experimental beer, and then um, it's a $30 ticket. So they're going to have a a two-day festival down in uh, Ava. Ava is apparently five hours away. Yeah. I've thought about about driving before and checking it out. I mean, because there's stuff you can hit on the way. Right, but and get your to get your Saint De Car in down at the still, get your uh, Brickstone on. But if you, you know, do that, you gotta stay the night. You can't come back that day. Like that's crazy. That's ten hours of driving. Yeah, you can't do that. That's too much. So yeah. you have to you have to like make that stuff. You have to be like, I'm going to scratch. I'll probably stay at whatever at little a motel red, six. Get a red, red roof in. in or whatever. <laughs> like <laughs> check for bud bags kind of place you're gonna stay oh, at down yeah. there. <laughs> but yeah, it's. It's not that hard of a drive, but yeah, you, if you're Five doing hours. it from Chicago, you got to like, it's a two day kind of trip. Yeah. But this is probably a good excuse. You forget how long Illinois is until you hear five hours. Yeah. You could drive five hours from Chicago, which ain't even really the top of Illinois and still 
be in Illinois five hours later just driving. I know, yeah. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Oh, so cheers to them for uh, five years. Five years. Wow. Yeah. Um, USA Today has a website called 10 Best, and 10 Best is doing their annual um, awards uh, nominations. Well, that sounds just super. 10 Best. USA Today is not good. <laughs> I can only imagine only that pick, this is not. If I'm at the Days Inn, which I'm never at, if I was at a Days Inn, I'd read the yeah, I'd read it's USA like Today. Yeah, the hotel newspaper. <laughs> Yeah, so um, they got a ton of categories, man. Um, best Brew Pub. Um, there's a few Chicago options uh, if you want to vote. Uh, Forbidden Root, Half Acre, uh, Old Irving, and Revolution are all up for Best Brew Pub on 10 Best. Okay. And for Best New Brewery on the local side, More Brewing, Winer, and On Tour are all nominees. Okay. So if you want to go out there. I don't, I don't know much about More. I've never been. It's so. in Villa Park. Yeah. Which is like by the airport, maybe, maybe by O'Hare, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And they won Best in Show at Fobat more. Mm -hmm. They just released Henna Batch 3, which is like a pastry stout. Yeah. Graham cracker, vanilla, chocolate stout. I think that's a pretty, or a decent list for the brew pubs. I would say Corridor. Corridor is a very should nice. Should be there. Like Old Irving, I really dug it when we went there and we talked about hitting that up for an interview. But I don't know if that's a best brew pub like I, I think they're very good but i don't i haven't had enough maybe maybe i just haven't had enough to like experience it yeah i'm trying to think of what they left off this list what is the best brew pub in chicago peace peace why is not pe peace is there peace will win uh, i'm not gonna, i'm not gonna argue <laughs> that i do i'm other brew pubs listed i'm probably at peace more than these other brew pubs right yeah and i so. think about I think about Peace Pizza. <laughs> Peace is on my mind yeah. more than these other brew pubs. <laughs> dreams about eating Peace oh, Pizza. Oh, man. <laughs> so good. So fun, man. Yeah, so if you're so inclined, go to 10 Best and, uh, you know, pick a Chicago brewery for Best Brew Pub and for Best New Brewer. Um, let's talk about uh, Detroit Rock City, man. Stroh's announced that they are um, – <laughs> the, the, the TTB gave them a um, – they granted their permission to uh, create a label for Perseverance, uh, Detroit Session IPA. Okay. So they're getting into the IPA game. Stroh's is. Oh, so the the macros are now IPA in it up. Yeah. Pers but this yeah. is a... Perseverance. It's not that much different. Remember when uh, Bob Budweiser came out with the, like, uh, it was like a full body... Like Budweiser or Platinum? Something it, like that. Was Bud. it plat? Was it Bud Platinum? My sister's really into Budweiser. There was Budweiser Select. I Maybe mean, it was Budweiser Select. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So it was that. They could just rename that like something else, right? And yeah. People might have uh, gobbled it up at that time. Yeah. You go to my sister's party, man. Uh, birthday party. Yeah. September, nice outside. Everybody's got Budweiser in one hand, a little plastic cup of Hennessy in the other hand. But wow. that's their thing. Budweiser Select the Hennessy. I'm like. You guys are nuts. I didn't even know they still made Budweiser <laughs> Select. Like, party on, man. Whatever works for you. Um, Dogfish Head is in the news. They are going to sponsor the uh, 2018 James Beard Awards. Okay. Yeah, so James Beard Awards are basically the Oscars of the food world. And um, those awards are in Chicago, May 6th and May 7th. Oh, damn. Yeah, so that's cool. The good folks at Mars Brewing have announced that they got their paperwork together. And their grand opening is Saturday at 3 p.m. Where? Oh, and Pilsen. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, Bridgeport. Bridgeport, not Pilsen. Bridgeport. Okay. In Bridgeport, yeah. Um, they are going to celebrate with the launch of Coffee Lumpen IPA on tap. Okay, so this is not like their fake Maria's packaged good slash we only serve Mars. Right. And then um, <laughs> the, the Beard Simple guys record down at um, the Co-Trans, the Co-Pro, uh, Co-Prosperity Sphere. Yeah. So you can always find um, Mars stuff on tap at the Beard Temple. But yeah, this is their own space. Oh, yeah. okay, that's so, cool. So now, man, they're slowly taking over that. That's cool, because um, like you said, Maria's was always Maria's just doubled their taps last year mm -hmm. because they opened Kimsky's on the other side, their restaurant, and that and that other like other side, yeah, but non dark side of <laughs> right Maria's, the, the modern side, <laughs> and now <laughs> and now they're gonna have uh, that that tap house, and then they're gonna have a full brewery down the street. Cool. So good That's for them. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I like their stuff. They got a. They got a different. Um, I like the bottles. It's like a 350 milliliter bottle. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. then their um, their pricing structure is intense. All their beers are too expensive. Yeah. 
That's why, one, I don't drink them that often because I'm like, uh, these are good, no. but they're always at least $2 more of anything you're going to find. Um, I understand, like, because like the, the 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 African tea in um, Jungle Boogie, yeah, and you know some a part of that's for ingredients. I get it, but yeah, it's 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 different. They've they've right. they've got their own lane. Maybe with the brew pub now open, price might come down a little bit because they could do it in more quantities and sell it. But you never pr- no. Why would you lower your price? Right, that's no, not how that works. I think they're kind of like, hey, this is for people who want to spend ten dollars on this pint. This is for you. Yeah, yeah some people want that. Right. It makes them feel pretty. Party on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm somewhere in between. I don't want that bud I don't want that bud select. No. But I don't necessarily want that ten dollar pint either. No. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Uh Schlafly's in the news, man. Schlafly has a uh, Pilsner in twelve packs and they announced for a limited time that their twelve pack Pilsner is gonna arrive with a voucher for a discount on a vinyl record. Okay. So you get a five dollars off a record for a limited time if you buy the twelve pack. What of pills. record? Um, you can whatever you want. It's five dollars off. Uh, they're picking uh, cer- any uh, certain certain uh, record stores. Uh, Brad, uh, Reckless Records in Chicago, 14, okay. 14 locations. Uh, okay. Citywide or sorry, nationwide. Yeah. So their their idea is, hey, you know, everyone's making pilsners now. We've been making a pilsner since nineteen ninety one, and it's cool that records are back in vogue. You know, Nielsen says this is the highest that vinyl has been sold in in For the real? Nielsen era since like you know like fourteen million albums were sold last year. Damn. So they're kind of celebrating that, tying the two together, and saying, hey, five dollars off any record you want on us if you go to Reckless Records in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. You got to buy this twelve pack. But oh, but you got to buy the twelve pack. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm kind of curious. So they've been making a pill since ninety one. I've yeah. never had their pills. Shaffley's, Shaffley's another brewery that I just, they're here and that's cool. Um, if they make great beer. I remember when they came or even pre-coming, uh, we did uh, a lot of stuff on the Hopcast with them because people yeah. would come up or bring it from uh, St. Louis. And once they finally came to Chicago, we were able to finally get them. And all their beers are great. But th- again, like we said, they get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. They're just like standards, but I would put them up there with like the, the amount I drink them is the amount I drink Great Lakes beer yeah. as well. Like it's becomes kind of like a seasonal thing. Yeah, like I know like Great Lakes. Great Lakes makes a great pills. I think yeah. it's a turn turnstile pills uh, or and that one's that one's really good. Um, yeah. I like uh, Elliot Nest. Yeah, from them. So maybe I drink Great Lakes a little more, but I kind of think of them as like the same category for me, where it's like yeah. These beers are good, and that's like the safest bet when I'm like, uh, yeah, I like this. I'm going with that today. Yeah. So uh, good for those guys, man, over at Schlafly. Nice. Got a nice Schlafly interview that I never posted. Uh, those guys came to town. We hung out at the PR company. Yeah. I think I'm going to post that for, for Beer Pass. It was really cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I lost the photos. That's why I never posted it. Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, and finally, i um, not sure if we talked about this, but uh, Three Floyds, uh, they're expanding. So they're taking over the whole block. Not uh, just the one that hasn't opened. Right. They got a distillery <laughs> next door that's been open for two years, and the, we there's no booze has come out of it yet. They run you through the distillery space to get your allotment for Dark Lord Day. Yeah. But they haven't opened it yet. Okay. So now they announced that um, you know, there's this Dallas company that has an office in Chicago that helped consult with them, and they're looking at an outdoor terrace, um, a brand new brew pub, and um, yeah, like double the space. Damn. Yeah. So that's nuts. All right, cool. That's it for news. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not recording here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD. Chicago Beer Pass is on Twitter at Chicago Beer Pass. Website, ChicagoBeerPass.com. Everything gets posted there. Mention the Instagram. Post photos there. Nick was posting photos on the Facebook page right as on. well. So we're always we're all over the place. So be sure to follow us up or like us or whatever the the thing you're supposed to do on that platform. Do, do it. it. Yeah. S- stay, Subscribe, stay like, follow, heart, favorite, whatever it is. All the above. Yeah. All right. We'll be back <laughs> next week with another episode. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>